Santa Cruz intro, take 23. Our favorite local beach town is only two hours away from home. Have you ever been to Santa Cruz? Do you find yourself always going to the same places, like the beach and boardwalk? If so, follow us as we take you to some places known and not so well known to eat, drink, and have fun. This is Santa Cruz. In 1885, three Hawaiian princes brought surfing to Santa Cruz while on vacation. They used redwood surfboards made by a local lumber mill to ride the waves of Monterey Bay. Jack O'Neill invented the wetsuit in 1950, allowing surfers to enjoy the sport year-round. The Santa Cruz Surfing Museum, located in a former lighthouse, has exhibits exploring over 100 years of surf culture. Best places to surf in Santa Cruz include Cowell Beach, Capitola Beach, Steamer Lane, and Pleasure Point. I am probably the only fan of the movie Lost Boys who has not been to this bridge. It was Hope's idea to go to this spot. She had been there before. If you have ever been to Santa Cruz, chances are you've been to the beach and boardwalk. Made up of over 2,070-foot Douglas fir pilings driven 21 feet into the ocean floor, the wharf was 2,745 feet long. The Santa Cruz Wharf was actually the sixth wharf, but none were able to serve deep water ships, so the current municipal wharf was constructed in 1914. Our main reason for visiting the wharf today was because Hope has a local friend who wanted to meet up with us. Sorry, I didn't include Christy in our video. I was doing my thing with recording and letting the ladies catch up while we're having cocktails at Mackay Island Kitchen and Groggery, which features a really cool rotating tiki bar. Our mixologist on duty, Jeremiah, served up some tasty cocktails with a side of good conversation in between customers. Check-in time. I found a great deal on Airbnb at Seaside Inn and Suites, which is conveniently located near restaurants and an ice cream shop I'll mention later. One of the many remodeled old properties in town, Seaside Inn and Suites is updated, clean, and stylish with a comfortable bed and that coffee machine in the office. 10 of 10 recommend. Tell an on Eddie on the go sent you. I also highly recommend the nearby Santa Cruz Diner, which is open 24 hours for your dining pleasure. You may have seen this East Coast style diner featured on the series Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. It features a great variety of offerings to please your palate. Hope had their bacon cheeseburger, and I had their jambalaya Santa Cruz with mussels and shrimp. Our server told me I did a good job annihilating my plate. What can I say? It was a long day, and I was hungry.
After filling our bellies, we headed for nearby Capitola to walk off some of those calories. We visited the pier, browsed the many shops and restaurants for future reference, and just overall enjoyed walking and taking in the awesomeness of this picturesque town by the sea. We even watched the surfers ride some waves. Santa Cruz, day two. And before anything else, we needed something to eat. Hope remembered seeing Firefly Coffee House the previous evening, so Firefly it would be. Firefly offers many different bagels and bagel sandwiches to choose from to go along with your coffee, or in my case, bottled water. We enjoyed our breakfast in the shade on their patio. What a great way to start off our day. One of the places we wanted to visit was the dog-friendly 65-acre Natural Bridges State Beach and Park. As per usual with the California State Beaches, there is a $10 parking fee, but we parked in the short-term lot and went exploring. You might get lucky and see seals, otters, or even migrating whales. We didn't. But we saw a lot of birds on those natural rock formations. We took a detour on our way back and walked through the grove of eucalyptus trees. I always like to visit the missions whenever possible. Founded in 1791, the original Mission Santa Cruz was located by the San Lorenzo River and was destroyed by floods in 1793. The present Mission Chapel is a replica built between 1822 and 1824 and is the oldest surviving structure in Santa Cruz County and is the best preserved Native American residence at any of the Alta California missions. The Santa Cruz mission was one of the smaller of the California missions. In the 4th Military District under the protection of the Presidio of San Francisco. Another must-see in Santa Cruz County was the Land of Medicine Buddha Retreat Center, 
which you can find at the end of a narrow winding road through the redwood forest near the small town of Soquel. My friend Patricia had raved about this 180-acre Buddhist refuge a few years ago when she experienced it while living in Santa Cruz. The center offers innovative secular education, including retreats, sacred sites, wellness programs, a primary school, end-of-life care, natural trails, and more. After the drive down the winding road, we were ready for a beer. So after getting back into Sokol, we found Sir Froggy's Irish Pub to drink a couple of semi-local brews. Driving through town, Hope discovered a vintage store called The Multi Shop. So we stopped in for a visit and she bought a vintage woven picnic basket. Sorry it's not shown here because I didn't think that I'd be talking about it in this video. But here we are. Owner Jamie was very nice and helpful. Hope wants to come back again later when we're in town. When we saw this sign, there was no way we could pass this place up without stopping and having another beer. Salud! After a beer, I was craving pizza. As luck would have it, this restaurant was in the same parking lot. Also, as luck would have it, it didn't open until 5 p.m., which was two hours later. Maybe next time. By the time we got back to Santa Cruz, our cravings had changed to clam chowder, so back to the wharf we went. That clam chowder bread bowl hit the spot. And that sourdough bread, mmm, I couldn't get enough of that. Ice cream for lunch, because why not? The next morning we checked out of our room and revisited Mary Ann's ice cream shop. Who cares if it was only 11.30 a.m.? This place is that good, and we weren't going to leave town without stopping there for a cup of some of the best there is. It's no surprise to me that this company has been in business since 1947. Best ice cream ever. As we continue our journey south, we decided to stop in Moss Landing and see what we didn't last time. Moss Landing State Beach.
That's quite the steep sandy hill you have to climb over to and from the parking lot, but the view was worth it. Another location we wanted to visit on our last time out was Moonstone Beach in Cambria. So we stopped there this time. Hope had been there before, and she likes beach combing for shells and stones. While she did that, I kept occupied with the waves and the driftwood huts. I often see them at beaches, but I think Moonstone Beach holds the record. It was quite a sight, seeing them lined up all down the beach like that. The idyllic little town of Cambria is so peaceful, who wouldn't dream of living here? We walked around for a while, then paid a visit to Cambria Coffee before driving the remaining half hour to our next destination. Morro Bay, one of our favorite towns on the central coast. Somehow, even though I was searching for Airbnbs only a day in advance or less, and pet-friendly ones at that, I seemed to luck out on price, quality, and location. Coastal Breeze Inn is another one of those nicely remodeled old motor lodges, and you can't beat the view of Morro Rock and the stacks down the hill from there. Across the street is the Hungry Fisherman Cafe. And there are many other places to eat and drink within walking distance. The view of the sunset was incredible. After enjoying that, we walked down to one of our favorite new finds in town, The Siren, Rhythm and Booze, a bar and performance venue which has hosted an incredible array of concerts on its stage. We'll keep an eye on their website and come back for some of that. Day three draws to a close and so does this video. We hope you have enjoyed coming along for our three days in Santa Cruz and our bonus stops on our journey southward along the Central California coast. Let us know what your favorite places are in Santa Cruz down in the comments. Join us next week as we continue with day four. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell and YouTube will remind you until then, Eddie on the go, and Hope, who is busy playing solitaire or something, I don't know, out. <laughs>